So this is a video to show the differences between Klein milling and conventional milling. Um, what we're going to do, we're going to just set up a 100mm square and um, set one for Klein milling and set the other for conventional milling. So here we are in, a, well this is an old version of, <coughs> of ArtCam and um, we've got our model um, size here which we are now going to create and we're going to create that at 110 by 110. So here's our canvas if you like. So on here we're then going to plant a um, 100mm square. Uh, no corner radius, we just want a normal square. We'll put the centre point at 55. 55. Alright, so that then puts our, our workpiece straight in the middle of the canvas. And there we have just our 100mm square. So we'll then go into the tool paths <coughs> and we'll select our tooling and speeds and various things. So obviously we want to do an outside cut because we're cutting outside the line. We don't want to be cutting inside the line. And we're just going to be using 16mm MDF. Um, so I'll, that's just it fluctuates on the thickness of the MDF. So I'll be running that at 17 millimeters, um, which is your depth of cut. So it'll cut down to a maximum of 17 millimeters, and that will cover any discrepancies in the thickness of the MDF. Because um, even though it's supposed to be 16 millimeter MDF, it does fl um, fluctuate. So we don't need to change most of this. We need to obviously tell it what tool we want to use. So we're going to pick an, a 5 millimeter end mill and um, in here we have the feed rate so we'll just leave that at 20 millimeters a second and the plunge rate the same um, the step down is how many passes it's going to make so the we'll put that to seven so what it's going to do is going to make two passes at um, seven mil and then so that's 14 and then 15 16 17 mil which is our depth of cut will be the last one and on the first one we'll have it as the climb mill so I'll do a little bit, a bit of a demonstration of that after the uh, machine and then just show you the differences and the way the cutter um, cuts into the workpiece so like I say we're on climb mill and we just need to tell it what material thickness we're using so we're again we just put that to 17 the same we push the arrow to the top because we want it to work down from the top and then we say now and there here is our cut line which is the outside line here so what we need to do now um, is uh, also when it's cutting this it starts off at this point goes all the way around and comes back to this point so what happens is that once it gets down to here you see on the last cut there's going to be a lot of vibration so the, the workpiece could come loose so we need to put some tabs in so we select the cut line and we'll go into the tabs right so we want to have a number of four tabs and we want the length of the tab to be three mil and down here is your bridge thickness which is your tab thickness from working from the bottom so it's 1.5 millimeters thick right just watch the drawing and we'll go create bridges and there you have your tabs so what that does is that links where you've got your material what you've cut out of here and this is your inside what you want to be left with that places these tabs so it supports the workpiece as it comes around and does its last cut and here this little green box just denotes where the cut is going to start so that's that one apply close right then we need to save it so we'll save as and I've already saved these as um, uh, before I started the video so we won't bother changing those and then also, once we've saved that, we then need to save the actual toolpath as a G code, which the CNC machine can then understand. So in here, you'd normally collect how, you know, select how many paths you've got and put those into the toolpath, save and such, such. And again, I've done those um, pre to the video. So we'll come out of, oh, we've got an error. We'll come out of that and we'll go into the Mac 3 software, which is what we use with this CNC. 
and we've got all our variables set preset so we don't need to change nothing so we'll go load and we'll just go to where I've saved those and we'll click the climb right and we'll just regenerate the paths and regenerate the drawing right so in the top right here we have our drawing and our machines all ready to go right so we've got the workpiece all clamped down this is just a scrap piece of MDF and the 16 millimeter MDF which we're going to cut through so that's all clamped down everything's ready to go so what we need to do now is we're just going to tell the head of the tool where the top of the work surface is and we'll just use that by using a um, touch off tool so this is an automated process so that now knows where the top of this surface is so now we know the cutter or the cutter now knows that the top of the work surface is here and we can go ahead and cut so like I said we're now going to do the climb mill And there you go, all done. So we'll just wipe the rubbish off. So as I said, the, the workpiece is still held in by the tabs, so that's not going to go nowhere. And um, like I was saying, if, if you're going to do your last cut and it was coming down here and the part starts to chatter like that, you can easily bust a cutter. Um, you know, I mean, they're pretty rigid, but they'll only withstand so much. Right, so what we'll do now is we'll move the cutter across to here zero it so it starts at this point here and then we'll do our next cut which is the conventional cut
So that's the cuts completed, so we'll just move the head out of the way. Then we'll switch the motor off, or the, the main switch to kill the motor so it can't start up on its own. And then we'll clean the workpiece off. So there we are, we cut all the way through, and there's our tabs. So I did add an extra one here and here just to make sure that the piece was going to be held in. So now we can just break those off, you see, because they're only quite thin, but thick enough to hold the piece in. And I'll just go and show you a close-up. So there's the tabs there, and they're, say, like just one, one and a half mil thick. The same with the other piece, we can just break those out and then that's left with the tabs on. So we can then just cut those off with a chisel or just sand them off or whatever. And that's the cut process done. So um, I'll show you now the finished results and then I'll just do a quick diagram on the um, conventional or the Klein Millen and conventional Millen. So here's our two work pieces. We've got our conventional milling piece here and our Klein milling piece. And if I show you here, you can see the differences between the two. I'm trying to pick up the edges here. You may be able to see those. Uh, let's have a look. This is our Klein milling piece. And this is our conventional milling piece. Because the cutter, when it's Klein milling, it gives a better edge. And I'll show that on a diagram. This is our conventional cut, and um, which is harder on the cutter. And also it doesn't give as good a cut as you can see here. We've got a bit of a um, step going on, or well, not a step so much, but just where the cutter is um, dragging more into the piece. Um, but like I say, I'll show you um, the difference between the two on a diagram. So there you go. Right, so we'll um, just do the diagram for the different cuts. So here we have our workpiece. Here we have the cutters. Right, the cutter always goes clockwise, like so. On the climb mill, the cutter's going to go around the piece that way. And on the conventional, the cutter's going to go around that way. So as the cutter comes up here, it's going to be going around this way and climbing into the workpiece. On the conventional mill, it's going to be going this way. So it's going to be cutting away from the workpiece. So the climb mill will always give you a better edge because it hasn't got to work so hard. So as you can see by that. On the conventional mill, because the cutter is working harder, it does give the cutter some deflection. So as you can see here, the, the edge isn't as good as what the climb mill edge is. And that's because the cutter is having a harder life. And also that shortens the life of the cutter, especially when you're cutting MDF. MDF is quite a hard material um, because of the resins and that impregnated into it. So it is hard on the cutters. And that's why um, really you should be using MDF cutters, which will give you a longer life. So um, that just shows you the two differences between those two cuts. Thank you.